All right, you can see here. You'll notice here too, do you see where we're putting the fuel in a tub? We're not just dumping on the ground. So once you guys think about being EPA uh, friendly and compliant here, we will recycle this uh, old fuel and not just dump it into the earth. So be green. All right, I'm gonna show you why uh, it's so important to clean out a tank, you know, multiple times. We've already flushed this a, a couple of times here. And if you really wanna check out and think about doing some diligent work here, let's see if I can't zoom in here. So take a look inside that tank. See all that rust? That is still up inside the tank. I mean, here's what a lot of people do, is they get in here and they look like this, and they go, oh yeah, pretty good. Looks like it's good. Well, I want you to think about something. That rust that's on the top side of the tank here is, is gonna fall down into that fuel system and it's just gonna create more problems. So what we really need to do is we still have more work to do to this. Um, we're gonna go ahead and do a prep tank kit. Here, I'll show you this. Uh, there's multiple brands out there. Um, I've had really good luck with this one. It seems to really adhere well. This is the Northern brand fuel tank liner. So uh, we'll go ahead and show you how to do that. Well, let's see a cool method here of how we could get a transfer on this. What we have here is mechanics kind of have this cool thing called dirty fingers. And what we could see here, if I hold this really good and tight and I just rub this around my, my monkey prints here, is I can end up creating a really nice template. I want to make sure and get the let me get the dirt off my hands here, where I really, because all I'm really concerned about. There. So now I've made a transfer template just with my messy hands there. I do not need to cut this out. I'm just going to take a piece of wood or plastic or something and I need to drill these two holes and then I'll sandwich a little piece of rubber inner tube in between here. I will use the stock bolts for the fuel valve and that's the way I can plug it off. So you can see here you just cut this down to a more manageable size. And look here, this is a good old Harbor Freight one, that Pittsburgh brand. This is a, what's called a hollow punch set. And what you can see here is you want to size up the hole that you want and we're just going to take a hammer we're going to use wood for underneath here so that we could take line this up good because what our goal here is is to go ahead here and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to peel that up like so that'll put me in the middle this doesn't have to be super, super precise. All right, we've gone through two cycles of this uh, metal rust remover. This stuff works phenomenal. Yeah, you can see down in there how it's just literally rust-free now. So it's a pretty awesome product. So now what I'm doing, a little trick, dealing with chemicals, is I'm going to put heat in here because we've rinsed this out with water like crazy and just made sure all the rust is gone. And what I'm going to do, uh, there's a little bit of water here I can't get out. And so by putting alcohol in here, um, you're able to allow the alcohol, or excuse me, the water to absorb with this, shake it up really good, and then I will drain this out, and that will literally take every last drop of water out of here. So I need a perfectly dry surface before I start my actual uh, coating process. Okay, what you see coming out now is just that heat that's also absorbed any water that's in there. And look how clear and clean that is now. Wouldn't you feel safe to put fuel into a tank like that? Let's line this thing and make it uh, ready to go for the bike. On to our next process here. And that's where we're actually going to apply the liner part. So, so far we've uh, degreased the tank. Well, first off, we removed the heavy rust with that uh, product. Just kind of a quick review here. We use this product to get rid of all the rust. And then we cleaned and prepped the tank numerous times with the fuel uh, tank cleaner. So we did that multiple times. And then after that step, we do the tank prep. And the product that's in here is a lot like heat to where it'll absorb any water that's in there 
you know, kind of etch and clean the surface, and this gets it ready for actually putting the liner on. So this is a really important step. You're gonna see now here, I duct tape the top just in case I spill a little bit putting the liner in. Before I do that, let's try and see if we could see how clean that tank is now. Clean. Okay, really, really nice and clean from all, all sides. So before I put the uh, liner in there, I'm gonna go ahead and do just a, a bit more prep work here. I'm gonna put my patch back on because what I have to do is pour that in and then, and this is the real key, is you need to rotate it. So we want that liner to be able to get over the entire tank without pouring out the gas cap here. All right, I'm gonna pour my northern kit in here. You can see it's just runny. And for the first, you know, attempt in here, we're not, not knowing the size of the tank, I pour an excess in. And what that'll do is it'll really let it roll through the tank better. And having that goal that I'm going to take it back out, the excess back through that uh, fuel valve that we have blocked off. If you put too thin a coat, it won't allow it to actually roll into the, all the areas of the tank. So. About half a can of this is more than plenty to do one tank, so you can very easily get two, uh, two jobs out of this liner. You might have to replenish, um, replenish these products to do your other tank. Right now what I'm going to do, I've got my liner in there, and I'm going to take, and I'm just going to, since i got a lot of it, so I can, you can actually almost hear it slosh, and I'm going to take and run back and forth. If you look in here right now, do you see how blue it is? Yep. So imagine that nice liner is going to go all the way around those edges. And I got to get the whole top side here without spilling, spilling it out the top or spilling it out the cap. Now look right here. Do you see, can you see in there how I don't have the tunnel right now? Yep. Okay, so that's why it's so important for me to, to keep verifying that I'm actually getting it rolled all the way around. So I'm going to try to get over that tunnel right now with the excess. I'm going to show you all the different positions that you want to rotate that tank and then let it sit there for 20-30 minutes as you flip between these positions. So check out the little setup that I have right here and that is uh, just a fan blowing some air through the fuel tank. Good ventilation, got the door open and then I'm going through the gas cap and I can feel here it's coming out so just getting that airflow will help uh, speed up the dry time. Not a bunch of forced air but good dry air. All right, I'm gonna put the fuel valve in now. Uh, the tank is cured now. And one thing I'm gonna do, this really shouldn't matter because there's a gasket all the way around. It has these crossover, you know, O-rings, if you will. But I always like to put some uh, silicone around the bolts just as an extra precaution. I'll show you that now. Very light amount. It's not like I'm putting a, you know, a whole bunch on there. So just keep that in mind. I took the washer off and I'm coating just the head and then I'm putting this on. That gives a nice flat metal surface for this to try and do its own sealing job. Make sure and uh, verify that the crossover tubes are clear and unobstructed. We need to make sure that fuel can get from the right side of the tank to the left side. All right, we're gonna take it for a test drive. We got the new uh, cream tank on, the new fuel valve, all the fuel lines, quick disconnect. New rear end, carbs cleaned. Uh, just kind of get a buzz around the parking lot before I throw a helmet and jacket on and go take it for a real test ride. So let's see.